Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Planetarium show. My name is Jessica. I'm the director of the Planetarium, and with me tonight are two of our students who I will let introduce themselves, starting with Lindsay. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm a physics graduate student here at UMD. And I'm Eli. I'm a physics undergraduate student here at UMD. So since we are at the beginning of August, which I still can't believe, I feel like I say this every month, but like, it's true. These months are just flying by. Um, but we are here tonight to go through our usual beginning of the month, uh, what's up show to talk about the astronomical events that are going on in the month of August. And there are a couple of really cool ones that we're excited about. Um, so as I get the show set up, um, as always, if you have any questions throughout our show tonight, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Um, Eli, I believe you're the one that's going to be keeping an eye on that for me, right? Yep. Awesome. So Eli is going to be keeping an eye on that. Uh, we'll let me know as those questions come up. And uh, we'll also have time at the end to answer questions as well. All right. Well, let's get into it. So we are going to start off discussing what's going on with the moon this month. Uh, we're actually starting this month uh, with the new moon coming up here in just a few days on August 8th. Uh, then about a week later on August 15th, we'll have the first quarter. Uh, about a week after that on August 22nd, we have our full moon for the month. Uh, for the month of August, the full moon is often called the green corn moon. Um, but for the... I know I just asked how to pronounce this, Anishinaabe, right? Yep, okay. I do believe. Um, who are the um, indigenous peoples to the Great Lakes area. Uh, this is known as the wild rice moon, which makes sense for this region. Uh, and then about a week after that, on August 30th, rounding up right at the end of the month is our third quarter moon. Um, so on here, we also have when these different phases are going to rise and set, because uh, if you didn't know, the moon is sometimes up during the day and sometimes up at night, depending on the phase. And so you can see here uh, when exactly those will be up. All right, moving on, uh, let's talk about what the planets are going to be doing this month. And at some point this month, you will be able to see uh, all of the planets up in the sky. So we're going to start with uh, Venus and Mars. Um, so Venus is going to be visible in the sky all month long. It's going to be in the western sky just after sunset, super bright. Um, it's actually, will probably be one of the first things you see pop out um, as the sun sets, that first kind of bright light you'll see in the west, that's going to be the planet Venus. Uh, and if you look at it through a telescope or a pair of binoculars, you'll see that it is this month going to be in its gibbous phase. Um, at the beginning of the month, uh, so for the first half of the month, near Venus in the western horizon, we're also going to see the planet Mars, but it's going to be pretty low in the sky. Um, so it's going to make it difficult to see. Uh, and so you may may not pick that one up with your eye. You may need a telescope or a pair of binoculars to try and see it. And then by the second half of the month, it will have um, set before the sun sets. And so we won't be seeing it for a while. And then at the end of the month, uh, we're also going to start seeing Mercury. Um, just like Mars, though, it's going to be pretty low in the sky. So it's going to be very difficult to see. You can see Mercury and Mars, how close they are to that setting sun. Um, so while it's going to start coming out at the end of the month, we're really probably not going to get good views of Mercury until September. All right, um, moving on. Jupiter and Saturn are going to be very prominent this month in the nighttime sky. Um, they are rising at the beginning of the month, a little bit later at night, around 10 p.m., but as we move through the month, uh, they'll be up earlier and earlier. Uh, and so you'll see them, especially Jupiter, shining very bright in kind of the east-southeast sky uh, right around when it's coming up. Um, Saturn actually reached opposition a couple of days ago. Um, and that just means uh, opposition is when the Earth and the planet are kind of the closest to each other that they get. 
So since Saturn reached opposition two days ago, it's going to be fairly bright and big in the sky for a couple of days. Um, and so it's a really good time to kind of look at it through a telescope because it's kind of the biggest it's going to look for us. Uh, and Jupiter is actually going to reach opposition later this month on the 20th. So this month is a great month to look at Jupiter and Saturn. Um, for Jupiter as well, there will also be quite a few times throughout the month when the uh, Galilean moons around Jupiter, which are the four largest moons, when those kind of transit. And so you can actually see the moons cast their shadow as they pass uh, in between us and Jupiter, cast their shadow on Jupiter. Um, so one of these that's going to happen is August 8th. So in just a few days from now, it's going to be pretty early in the morning, though. Uh, we're looking at like 5 a.m. Um, but then once Jupiter has reached opposition on the 20th, this is also going to happen uh, fairly often. Um, we, uh, we got a question. Okay. Um, how does the location of the stars and planets change based on our location in the United States, particularly South Carolina? Hi, Mom. Uh, <laughs> I heard South Carolina, and I looked. Yes. Hi, Mom. Oh, everyone watching, tell my mom happy birthday. Her birthday's tomorrow. I'm totally calling you out. Uh, <laughs> so for the planets and stuff, I mean, they're going to look pretty much the same. Um, South Carolina, since it's at a bit lower latitude, um, the, the northern, the stars in the north are a bit closer to the horizon than they are for us here in Minnesota. Um, but in general, you're going to see the same trends, same, roughly same times to, to find the planets, roughly same trends throughout the month. So nothing changing too much. Um, but if you are wanting to know for your specific location, um, this program that I've used to like grab these screenshots of like, where and when the planets are going to be. This is actually a free program called Stellarium, uh, which you can download for yourself and play around with. There's actually a link in the video description. Uh, so you can put in your specific date, time, and location, uh, and it'll show you what's going to be up. Um, so that can also help you out if you're worried about there being too much of a difference between what I'm saying here for Duluth and your location. All right. Um, so yeah, that's Jupiter and Saturn. Um, and then the last planets that are going to be up uh, are Uranus and Neptune. They're up um, this month as well, although we cannot see them with our naked eye. Uh, Uranus and Neptune are too dim to be seen without a telescope or a pair of binoculars. Um, but they will be up uh, pretty late at night, so we're looking like best to see like after midnight. Um, but they'll be up there as well, kind of in line with Jupiter and Saturn, and that's because all of the planets kind of lie on the same plane, because our solar system is like a flat disk. And so all of the planets orbit the sun in kind of the same, the same region, the same plane. And so they make this nice line across the sky, which makes it pretty easy to find them. Um, if you do have a small telescope, this is kind of what you would see through it for Uranus and Neptune. Um, Uranus is going to be a little bit bigger because it's the closer of the two. Um, and you'll see that, that kind of blue appearance to it. Neptune is going to be much smaller. Um, you will be able to tell that it's not a star because stars are like pinpoints of light. You will be able to see an actual like circle, an actual disk, um, but it's going to be very small. And uh, depending on how dark your location is, you may also see that kind of blue tint to it as well. Um, let's see. Uranus is actually going to start its retrograde loop on August 20th. So um, this retrograde motion, what it means is the planet appears from our viewpoint here on Earth to kind of stop its regular eastward direction move backwards for a little bit before stopping again and moving back in the original direction. That's what we call retrograde motion or retrograde loop. And it turns out that happens uh, when the Earth is really just passing that planet because all of the planets that orbit the sun orbit at different speeds with the planets closest to the sun going faster and the planets further from the sun going slower. So every so often, the Earth going faster than the planets that are further out from it will catch up and pass it. 
And it's in that, that process of catching up and passing it. Oops. I don't, Adobe is like not happy with me right now. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's in that moment of catching up and passing it that the planet appears to change direction, although it's not actually. Um, so for Uranus, and you can see this path that it's been taking throughout this year, that's going to happen on August 20th, where it's going to kind of go back the opposite direction until January of next year, where its retrograde will end, and it'll start going back um, its, its initial direction. And that is what's going on with the planets this month. So a good chance to see all of them uh, at different points throughout the month. All right, the last big thing that, um, a last big astronomical event that we have going on this month is a meteor shower and quite a fantastic one at that. So if you didn't know, meteor showers are actually the result of Earth passing through the debris trail left behind by comets. Um, comets are made up of uh, ice and, and dust. They're kind of like a dirty snowball. And when they get close to the sun, those ices melt and vaporize, and that causes a bunch of gas and dust to kind of be spewed off of the comet. And that dust gets left behind kind of along the comet's orbit. And so each time that we pass through this debris trail, we now have lots of little pieces of dust that fall through our atmosphere. And as they fall, they get hot and they glow, and we see that as that bright meteor streak. Um, so this month, we have the Perseid meteor shower coming to a peak. Um, it's actually been going on from uh, about July 17th and will continue until August 26th, but it's going to peak uh, between August 11th and August 13th. Um, so those are the best nights to go out and see it. You're going to want to go out preferably later in the night, so after midnight. Uh, the meteors appear to all be coming from a region of the sky around the constellation Perseus, which is why they're called the Perseids, um, which around midnight is going to be located in kind of your northeastern sky, but you actually don't want to look directly at Perseus. Because when you do that, you will see the ones coming straight at us. But that's a kind of small tail, small trail to see. And so what you actually want to do is kind of look to either side of Perseus, so kind of more towards the north or to the south. And then you're going to see the actual long trail of that piece of debris as it falls through the atmosphere. And you'll get a much longer, um, easier meteor to see. Um, now, the Perseids are a huge event because this is one of the major meteor showers that we have, the other big one being the Geminids in uh, December. Um, and so during the peak nights of the Perseid, you could see upwards of 100 meteors per hour. And this year, we are very fortunate that the moon is in an early crescent phase, so it's not going to be up. Uh, so we're going to have some really dark skies, uh, which is going to hopefully, if the weather cooperates, make for some gorgeous viewings for this meteor shower. Um, and this is precisely why we picked next week during the peak of the Perseids for our dark sky caravan. Um, so for those of you that may know, uh, for the past three years, three years, um, we've been doing this event called the dark sky caravan where we take our portable planetarium and telescopes up to different locations along the North Shore um, of Lake Superior up here in northern Minnesota and just kind of celebrate the dark skies that we have because uh, Minnesota is actually home to some of the darkest skies east of the Mississippi and we want to celebrate that and kind of preserve that. Um, last year, our event was virtual because of COVID. Uh, this year, we're doing kind of a hybrid event. We're going to have virtual shows on Monday and Tuesday, and those will take place right here on Facebook Live. But then starting Wednesday, we are going to take our telescopes out for some star parties. So Wednesday's star party is going to be here in Duluth. We'll be set up outside the planetarium at UMD. And for the first time, I think I've actually convinced them to turn the parking lot lights off. So we will not have as much light pollution. We will hopefully have much better skies to actually observe from. Um, but since we are going to be at the planetarium, 
we're also going to do some shows for you guys. It's one of the reasons we wanted to still have it at UMD, um, even though we sometimes, you know, have to fight the parking lot lights. Uh, we're we're going to do some planetarium shows. Um, so uh, we'll be doing shows um, starting at 8 p.m. Uh, there'll be roughly 15-minute shows run throughout the event. Uh, we do have, of course, masks are required uh, on campus, um, as UMD just stated uh, a couple days ago. Um, masks are required within the planetarium itself, which has been our policy from the beginning. Uh, and we have to limit uh, the size to 13 people just to stick to the, the six foot social distancing. Um, but we will, we're gonna try and run as many shows as we can through that time period. So come out, look uh, up at the sky, enjoy some hopefully darker skies with the lights turned off. Um, so we're excited for that. Um, then Thursday, we'll be up at Tedeguchi State Park with our telescopes. Uh, Friday, we'll be at North House Folk School in Grand Marais. And then we are ending our night Saturday, or ending our week Saturday, um, at Chick Rock Museum and Nature Center, which is at the end of the Gunflint, which has crazy, crazy dark skies. And it's going to be beautiful, and I'm so excited. All right. Um, I guess the only other piece I want to say... For anyone who hasn't heard of it yet, um, on was it Friday? Friday of last week, yeah. We officially launched our All Sky camera that's located up at Chick Walk. Um, what this camera does is it takes pictures of the night sky um, throughout uh, about 30 minutes before sunset to 30 minutes after sunrise and compiles these beautiful time lapse. This is last night's, if it's going to load. There we go. Um, and it's it's both interesting and sad that you can really see the smoke from the wildfires um, as that's definitely kind of come back to the region. And so you can see that smoke kind of coming through, um, making it harder to see the skies. Um, but yeah, so we, we have this launched. Um, if you go to the web page, which is um, linked in the video description, uh, you'll see there that we have a place that shows the most recent picture that came from the camera um, and has like links to archives of past night's images and time lapse videos and some information about the camera itself. And we're, we're super excited to finally have this go live and show, uh, really showcase these dark skies that they have up there. All right. Well, I think. I think that's all I got. So let's see if we have any other questions. Nope, nothing else. All right. Well, if anyone has any other questions, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments. We'll take a few minutes more to see if any of those come through. Um, and we don't have too much to to promo for the upcoming weeks. Um, Saturday, we're going to be doing our monthly constellation show to go through these stars and constellations that are up in August. Uh, but then, of course, next week, as you know, we're going on our dark sky caravan. Um, so that's what we'll be doing that week, um, next week. And we're very excited to be going back out. I know it's not the full event but I'm still excited to get out there. So, yeah. Oh, no, Eli, didn't you say that, like, the Perseids in the dark sky was, like, your first real meteor experience? Yes, it was. At least the first one that I can remember. I'm sure I'd seen them before and just not really thought much of it. But, um, yeah, it was in Grand Marais. Um, I think that, I mean, obviously, it was two years ago. Um, and we were on the patio which they newly renovated first of all we'll do some promo for voyager um, they newly renovated their patio they have one up top on the building now it's very cool um, but we were out on the patio on voyager and i was standing at a telescope and it was like right as i took my eye off the telescope and like looked away like the brightest flash i've ever seen went through the sky and it was fantastic and i remember i started screaming and jessica was the only person that was there and she's just like smiling at me like <laughs> like, what happened? like I am right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is everything okay? What happened? Um, 
but uh yeah it was uh yeah it was fantastic and yeah. i've never seen anything that rivaled it since i did see one yesterday though i saw one yesterday night is very pretty but uh yeah it was fantastic yeah and well i mean you'll we'll be seeing them for a while it'll just like the peak during those nights is where you're going to see a lot and i'm yeah. so excited that we're going to be kind of out with telescopes although telescopes aren't good for watching meteor showers but we'll be able to look at like jupiter and saturn because as we've seen those will be up uh venus yep. earlier in the night uh so lots of fun things to look at yeah and then the cool thing about it is like when we're out there um when they're because people are going to have to queue up to look at look through telescopes the cool thing is like the people that are waiting also have something to watch because like if you stand there long enough you will see one so like yes. there's stuff to see it's pre it's pretty cool yeah so we're we're excited um and we'll also be um doing like live star shows out as well kind of pointing out constellations and things um as we wait for telescopes um mm -hmm. i will go ahead and say that um we may not be doing eyepiece with the telescope um, we may have like a screen to look at. Um, I'm still debating with cases kind of on the rise, uh, what we're going to do. Um, but I just don't want anyone to, to be upset if that ends up being the case. Uh, we obviously want to make sure that we're keeping the community safe and all of those who come to our event safe. Um, but that will be determined probably next week. Um, as we just kind of look into things, I'm also looking at ways to like, if we can quickly like sanitize things and, and yeah, we just, we just want to make sure everyone's safe and I don't want to cancel the event. I'm too excited about it, which may just be me being selfish, but I think it'll still be good. So. Um, we actually just got a comment that I would like to comment on if possible, because I actually did something involving this. Okay. Um, so we got, we just got one saying that um, they heard Hubble caught a photo of three triplet planets having a tug of war, and um, they're asking what that is. Um, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're referring to is a photo that it caught of three galaxies playing a tug of war. Because I actually posted that photo to the Planetarium's Facebook feed a couple of days ago. Um, so it's actually three galaxies, and um, what that is is sometimes when galaxies get close enough or gravity pulls them together um, over a long period of time, they collide. And it just so happened that Hubble caught a photo of three galaxies colliding as opposed to two. Um, so it's on our Facebook page. You can go um, look back. I mean, I'm sure, God, it had to be within the last seven days. Um, yeah, I remember just, this one. So you can just scroll back and see it. Um, it's right there. And it just means that three galaxies, um, their gravity pulled them into a collision and three of them collided at the same time, which looks really wicked. And also so, very common. Yeah. Well, three, I mean, three is less common. Three, well, less common now. Yeah. More common in the early universe. Yeah. So. Um, but things but yes. were a lot more chaotic back then. Yep. So, so you can scroll back on the Planetarium's Facebook feed to find that if yeah. you like. Yeah, I remember you posting that picture. It was really pretty. Very cool. Very pretty. I mean, I know we're all kind of fans of galaxies in general. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very cool. All right. Well, I guess we are going to wrap it up there. Um, not, not too terribly much, although a couple of, I mean, we got some good, exciting stuff happening. So that's what matters, right? Got some mm -hmm. good planets up, got an awesome meteor shower happening. And of course, dark sky caravan. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we hope that you can come out uh, at some point next week as part of our caravan, or at least tune in to our virtual shows we're doing Monday and Tuesday. Um, we are going to have um, a, at least one guest coming on um, where we're still, I'm still waiting to hear back from one more, but it'll be fun. We're going to talk about a lot of cool stuff and then head out and do some actual viewing ourselves and maybe i don't know eli maybe we'll try and do a facebook live from one of the viewings yeah well we'll figure something out especially if we're doing it with mon with like with a screen we could easily do a live and show that right yeah
So, all right, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go. Um, thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and we will see you next time and hopefully next week. So, bye everyone. <laughs>